<laughs> All right, hello YouTube. This is uh, How I Tank Season Two, Episode Three, and this is the third time we tried to make this one. <laughs> I've screwed up every time. So uh, right now we have uh, Gork in his 5120, and he's platooned with Janik 80 in his I IS. Must have right this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, I like the fact that this platoon is going towards city. Um, to me. The city is for heavies, and 1-2 line is for medium slash TDs, and the center area along the EF line is for medium slash lights. Um, of course, there's exceptions. If you don't have any mediums, then of course some of your heavies are going to have to go 1-2 line and stuff like that as well. Um, what do you like to do on this map, too? I think in a heavy, I agree. Um, the only instance where I give a little leeway... There, well, there's two instances. One, for French heavies, because they have the mobility to cover the one two line with mediums or be on this side to be the sniper um, French heavies have a little more flexibility in regards to where they go but um, in the second the second um, stipulation is team spread where they decide to go and I'll just cover the weak side so I like the way this 5120 is using his IS-8 right here at the corner for armor um, if somebody came through and got spotted they would both have shots at the whatever the target was, while well, the target basically either has to decide to shoot the 5120 in the turret or he'll hit the IS-8. So, it's very well played. Frenchies should not be the first thing you see when you come around the corner. Well, I mean, it, it, when I'm playing, I love it when Frenchies are the first thing I see <laughs> when they come around. But <laughs> if you're the Frenchie, you don't want to be the first thing to be seen. Um, I think this IS-8 overextends here. He should have stayed back behind those buildings up top. Um, nice granted, he thought he was going to get a free Panther 2 kill, but for that, it's 730 damage from the 5120 and uh, one shot from the IS-8. So You're talking over a little over 1k damage taken just so you can kill a tier 8. Right, and he didn't even not get the kill. It. Nope. Not even worth it. And, uh... I don't care who you are, or what your team spread is like, an OSP in that position is just a bad idea. The gun depression is not good enough to, to be on top of that hill. And your armor is only good in one direction. I mean, granted, most tanks' armor is only good from the front, but an OSP's armor really is only good from the front. The sides and the rear are, like, stupid. So. That, and I think what makes it more awkward in that position is the rear-mounted turret. Correct, you have to totally extend yourself to get any shots. So. Um. While he's reloading, he's putting himself in a position where he's he's safe. You know, um, He can't get hit by Artie where he's at. None of the tanks can shoot him. So, it's how you want to play a French heavy. Now, uh, one of the things Tofu brought up the other <laughs> two times, but isn't bringing it up this time, is uh, we like the way that these uh, platoon guys are forcing the, the Ospi to decide which way he wants to face, which way he wants to shoot. Um, the IS-8's in front of him, while the 5120 comes up uh, to his rear. Um, if, uh, if you force your enemy to make too many decisions at once, it's going to cause information overload. It's going to make them... You know how it is. If you got two tanks charging you from two different directions, you're going, "Oh God, what do I do?" So, you know, that's that's exactly what you want to do if you're in a platoon. You want to force the other guy to go, "Oh God, what the fuck do I do?" So, you want to force the enemy to make decisions, and when you put so many options out there for them to decide upon, you feast on when they make the wrong decisions. Right. There was only one right decision in that situation if you were the OSB, that would have been to turn into the building so you didn't have either end of your tank sticking out the side. Um, force them to come around the corners at you. But you know, he had a whole lot of information a whole lot of different choices there. He could have pulled forward to go after the IS eight, he could have pulled back to go after the uh the fifty one twenty. He could have turned around and tried to run. We hit them hard. And like I said before, 
These are some really good lead shots through foilage. Those are some difficult shots to take at a small tank that's going pretty quickly and through all that crap on the ground. Um, so those are pretty pretty good shots. Um, also, uh, there's only one mod that the Wargaming has made illegal that I'm aware of. There might be more, but the, the only one that I am aware of is the one that gets rid of the, the leaves on trees and on the bushes. It basically, what the mod does is it makes it so it just looks like a bunch of sticks are sticking out of the ground. So, like, say you were in a IS-3 coming into, like, say the Magic Forest, um, on Moravanka and there was a KB-5 there. With the foliage you can't see the R2-D2 that well, you kinda have to, you have to know where it's at uh, and whatnot. With this mod it takes away the foliage and you can see the R2-D2. It is illegal if you have it and you ever think about uploading videos, make sure that you disable that mod. Uh, I would suggest not playing with it, period. Uh, I think it's cheating. Uh, but if you're gonna use it and you're gonna upload videos, make sure you disable it. So he does a really good job here of taking out the T-54. Um, it's one of those tanks that can make a Frenchie's life hell. It's fast enough to get on your sides and if you're out of rounds, there's not much you can do about it. While he's reloading, he's going to come back here and put himself in a position to take out this T-43, which is another good choice. You want to take out the fast tanks. Um, for all he knows right now, it's just this T-43 and an IS. The IS really can't get over here to stop him um, or to really hurt him while he's reloading, whereas the T-43 can So he's taking shots from the low and the IS. He decides to back off and reload, which is a good choice. He knows that the IS and the low are far enough away they can't um, push into him while he's reloading. And um, you don't really want to get into a sniper war with the low. The the armor is better on the low, and at that range you're going to have a harder time penetrating him than he is going to uh, have it penetrating you. So uh, the low is a sniper tank. <laughs> and you're not, so it's a good choice to move down behind this hill. Technically, is a sniper tank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Now, this is one of the only two things in this in this replay that me and Huey really disagree with is one, how he approaches these two tanks. Um, I don't think going through an open field like this is the efficient way of doing so. Um, you never know what RNG could do to you. Uh, in terms of getting tracked, getting focus fired by two tanks while you're in the open, while you're transitioning, you're trying to take shots on the move because you're trying to get to cover. Um, I think we both agreed that it's safer if he would have just, in that moment earlier when he was in the ditch, take that ditch up to the FE line in town and then snipe from there. But in this instance, I guess it works out. Also, the just I mean, this game is well known for its art. And it's freaking crappy spotting detection um, you never know when you're charging across the open like that you could be exposed the whole time while you can't see the low but the low can see you type thing so you want to be very careful when you're moving across the open like that especially like you know he's defending his cap um, I mean if you don't move up into the city to snipe stay there at the hill and wait for them to come to you you know there's um, it's, it's kind of risky charging across the open like that. This is the second point of contention. I think in this instance when the IS-3 is kind of busy with the IS, um, after this clip uh, I would have done things a little differently than he did in terms of um, his engagement route. Route. <laughs> what do you mean? 
whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and I agree with that too. Um, you're gonna see here he um, after he reloads, he's gonna. I mean, I'm fine with the point up until after this next clip is done. Um, we'll get there. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We've already recorded this twice. <laughs> it's late at night. We're tired. Uh, I have to be up at three. It's 10 p.m. So, but yeah. So, guys, if you're if you're the IS in this situation, uh, side scraping the IS3 is a good idea. It, it makes it very hard to hit you. But do it on the other side of the tank, especially you want to be on the opposite side of the tank from your friendly tanks, because he blocks some shots here, which makes it really hard for this 5120. So. Uh, here's the spot we were talking about. If we were playing this 5120, we would have continued pushing up the one line, and then come across the A line and sniped, or, or you know, and come in from the rear. Whereas here, he chooses to charge across the open and put himself in a very uh, risky situation. He goes behind this rock. The IS-3 basically is hold down on the, his dead IS buddy. The IS-3 knows that he has to come out from behind this rock on either side. And once he gets spotted, he can get shot. Meanwhile, this 5120 only has shots at the turret, and that's about no it. So. Yeah, again, luckily he has gold shells loaded. Yeah. We can't move. Which, by the way, people, on that point of the IS side hugging that IS-3, pay attention to your map. Where your teammates are. That helps. Alright, so he got 5,900 damage, 9 kills, and I think it was a 28 or 2,900 uh, XP game. He did a really good job. Thank you for your submission. And uh, we're going to have a couple more replays in this video. So. Hey guys, welcome back. In this replay, we have Double G from Mad playing his bat chat on White Park. Um, we are going to go ahead and bump it up the times two in three, two, one, now. Um, he does a really good job here at the beginning of just uh, scouting. And uh, like to me, uh, the sign of a good bat chat is, is, is somebody who waits for openings, waits for the other team to do something stupid and then take advantage of it. So you're gonna see him, he's gonna spend a lot of time just kinda sitting at this hill doing some spotting and um, giving his team some lights uh, taking advantage of you know whatever the uh, open shots he can get which don't end up being any for a while that's why we're at times two so uh, <clears throat> this uh, little route he's running is uh, probably uh, one of my favorite ones for any fast medium slash lights I um, I don't expect, I don't, I wouldn't want to heavy to do this just because if you get caught somewhere and tracked, you know, you're not really fast enough. I don't know. It just, to me, the heavy should be concentrating over around the, uh, one, two line watching underneath the bridge and, um, at, you know, D, E, nine and zero to watch across that, that other crossing there. But, uh, what do you think, Tofu? What do you like your heavies to do on this match? Um, depends. I prefer tanks um, to be where you said. Maybe a TD on track just because of the fear factor and the suppression ability. Um, but I would also like to think that if I have American tanks with good gun depression, I would like to sit them um, kind of at this middle section of the trains because every now and then what you do is you just keep monitoring the tanks that, that are um, diagonally across from you and when they're not looking you can just move up without you know with only you know minimal view of your hull and still get a shot off real quick and then get back to safety relatively. Alright, All right, um, I'm at 1040 let's uh, go back down the times one and three two one now. Uh, I'm at 1029 right now. So. Mm -hmm. This spot where he's at right now, I really like it. It allows him, when he peeks forward, to get shots off at people crossing uh, over towards the tracks there while exposing a very little amount of his tank. 
and um, another good sign of a good bat chat player he took one shot and backed off he didn't try and get a full clip out when he you know he could have he could have on that is4 he had side shots but he would have like taken a shot from the right is4 through. so right through their armor. Now he's taking his time on the reload to survey the field. Like I said, in a bat chat, you should always be looking for pockets um, of either holes to get across the enemy and get behind and get some flanks, or isolated tanks. Right, like this T-110E5 that's coming up here. You literally have a tank that, without depending on you know luck, like an artillery or, or an ammo rack, um, can solo a tank by itself in one volley. So um, finding stragglers like this is, you know, a great way to go about it. And then, like, the thing I like is he backs up, he forces reload. He's like, okay, I'm safe. Let's get five more shells, you know, instead of just one. Um, I think that too many people uh, don't know, so I'm going to tell you, if you need to force a reload on any of these autoloaders, you hit C. It will reload no matter how many shells you have left. Uh, I know that's kind of a noobish thing for a lot of you, but some of you might not know. I know it took me, you know, uh, I think it was three or four games after playing with the French tanks to figure that one out. Um, so, hey. Um, but if you're safe and you can, get a full reload. Now he's got the, it, it, he's got the possibility of another um, almost 1,600 damage now instead of just one... 390 damage round. So. The key here is when you have a full clip, you don't have that awkwardness of looking at the remaining tanks available. You don't want to run into one of those with one shot, get your one shot off, and then be stuck. Right. Especially since, what's the reload on this again? Uh, my reload timer's not working. I've never actually played one. Was it 20 something? It's, it's, like, 30, it's like 31. Yeah. So you don't want to take that one shot at like Say you come around the corner and there's a IS-4 there. You take your one shot and then, oh, well, crap, now I got 30 seconds where I can't do anything. You got to spend 30 seconds running around trying to stay alive. So. Uh, so right here, their team is down. He's going to force his reload because he's safe. He's going to need his five shells. So. Yeah, and they're not going to be spotting him from, from tracks I like from this distance. It's also a good thing to let your teammates know when you're reloading. F8 key for anybody that doesn't know. It is your friend. Or you can hit Z and then go to reloading if you want to, but I think F8's way, way easier. So. Yeah, you, you really don't want a teammate having to expose themselves thinking that they have backup and then you lose a teammate um, and gain nothing out of that engagement, that, that trade. I mean... So he's got two tier 8s ahead of him, and with the amount of HP he has left, these tier 8s can and will kill him. IS-3s are awesome anti-medium tanks. Um, the BL-9 just does really good work against soft armor, so... <clears throat> And the T110E4 is a defeatist. Just saying. <laughs> the premature GG. Yeah. Don't be that guy, people. Hell, I know. I've done it before. It looked like we were going to lose and the team was retarded. And I've said, man, you guys suck. And then they come back to win. And I swear to God, I blushed. Felt like a dumbass. So. <laughs> you blushed? I did. I, felt, I was embarrassed because I looked like a jackass. Right he does a really good job here. He gets the shot between the pillars. Forces a reload. Um, yep, because he know he knows where the other tank is headed towards. Um, relatively safe. Small map too, so even if he decides like maybe I want to go after the artillery, um, and the guy starts capping, it's, this map isn't big enough to to the point where that will be detrimental to you. No, the bat chat is definitely fast enough to come back and stop it, even if he was sitting on it. 
you know, the H2 area, even maybe J2, J K2 area, he could probably make it back to stop the cap in time. And, and to be honest, with the tanks available, chances are it's going to be one person capping. It's a lot of that's a lot of time to, to recover, even if you weren't in a bad chat. Um, I think this IS-3 makes a mistake. Um, pushing a bat chat is a bad idea. Like, you always assume a bat chat's got five shots. Um, that's the way I play. I play against every French tank, I assume they have a full canister. Yep. Now another full reload. Because again, you don't want a one shell against an artillery piece, and that makes things awkward. Yeah, because he can't actually one-shot either one of these artillery pieces left unless he gets an ammo rack. Yeah, so. not without getting lucky. The M40, M43, he peeks over. <laughs> had he known all he had to do was follow him around, he might have been able to kill him. But, but then again, that's still a pretty... That would have been a pretty lucky shot by the M40, M43, even if he followed him. So. Yeah, I mean, on the move like this and... You know, accuracy, you're probably talking at best the splash, yeah. probability wise, and that won't kill. Not without getting lucky. Right. He gets really lucky that the M43 decided to drive so far in before he turned around. Um, if the M43 had started turning around as soon as he got around that building, the gun would have been facing him, so. Yeah. You go ahead and forces another reload, which. Uh, like we said earlier, he needs at least two shots to kill this object two on two, so you know this gives him the ability to miss one. He didn't have that before if he hadn't reloaded. So. And in a situation there, like against that M40, um, when you know an artillery that has a long reload just fired, um, some people get in bad habits of just constantly circling an artillery because that's the thing to do. Take your time, stop moving, and aim. You have 30, 40 seconds. Right. Yeah. The yeah. only thing I'd be a little worried about is if it was a French artillery. The reloads so fast, and it yeah. always seems to surprise me every time they reload. Right, <laughs> and I'm right in front of them. I'm like, damn it. Yeah. Well, the Lorraines, you're talking like a 16 second reload. And, you know, M40, you're talking high 30s. Right. So just take your shot and you know get a good shot off. All right. So he finishes this up with 7,600 damage and uh, seven kills. I think he got. He, if I remember from the email, he made over a hundred thousand credits and a 3.9k experience. So we've got one more replay for you guys. Um, so we'll be right back. Oh. All right, guys. In this replay, we have uh, Le Guin from BT, and he's in hey, the call. Too. So there he is. Uh, he's playing his M3 Lee. This is uh, what the hell is this? Move out. Fjords. And uh, one of the things I really enjoy about this tank is that if you get top tier, it's basically just lulzy. It's It's got a huge gun, the armor is amazing, and it's just fun. Uh, Le Guin and I were talking earlier about how um, when you play this tank, you don't want to play it like a regular medium tank. You don't have a turret. Um, you want to play it more like a TD, so sit in the back and snipe, or put yourself on a corner somewhere so only the right side of your tank with your gun is pointing out. See, as I turn around, you can see the gun is on the right side. So if you put this part behind a building or a mountain or something and only have this part exposed, you're very hard to kill. However, counter to what Huey just said, uh, I do not play like a TDA this match. <laughs> so uh, just be, be warned and prepare for explosions. <laughs> <Deja vu. laughs> <laughs> this may or may not be take two. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, if you play this thing like a medium, like you go charging out in the wolf pack, you are going to be disappointed, and the experience you have in this tank is not going to be very fun. I've uh, grounded it through twice because I wanted to get the tier one heavy, and then I decided I wanted to go with the medium line again, so you have to grind it to get to the M4. Um, and it was only the second time around that I actually started enjoying this tank. The first time around, I freaking hated it. Likewise, this is my second time playing the, the Lee. What a silly DT. Lucky shot! <laughs> so that was one hell of a lucky shot right there on that Hetzer. Don't be afraid to take this. Yeah. 
This is where the good armor comes into play. Good armor at this tier, that is. I don't know what the hell that was. Explosions. Holy crap, those already want you. <laughs> So I actually, I really enjoy this uh, line that he's taking in this match. Um, I tend to go this way in most of my mediums and even my heavies. Um, I say most of my mediums because if I have a really fast medium, I prefer to go to the north up towards the uh, A line, B line. But I know, what do you guys prefer when you play this match? Uh, depends. depends. In mediums, it's, you know, hill or middle. I don't really like to fight in the south unless I'm in a heavy or a TD. Likewise. Uh, mainly because usually the people you're with want to push around the corner and then get already to shit, so um, it's not really good decision making, um, you know. Right. But yeah, you also got to read the enemy team. Like, in this battle, I was just super aggressive because of the tiering as well as the positioning, so... Um, just make those decisions. I will say if I spawn on the, the side right now that you're capping, I do tend to go north, even if I'm in a heavy. It just, it feels less exposed. Like, if the other team is on the ball and they have some really fast lights, they're going to be in position to spot you in a big heavy as you move across the, the road going towards the south. So, like... And that's game. <laughs> Alright, so he ends up with 1300 damage, 7 kills, and a Pascucci's for killing all three of the Artie. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, just a quick update, Smeg is doing his finals this week. Or he should be done with his finals already, but uh, he might be putting out more content soon. I don't know. Tofu, you know anything on that? Don't know, but um, I'll be putting up uh, an announcement in a bit. So. Alright, well thank you all for watching. Um, mm -hmm. Hit Go subscribe. ahead and check out the uh, Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash psychic goldfish prods. Uh, I actually, I want to get the community building over there. Ask questions. We got a lot of people with knowledge. If you have any questions about tanks or how you should play or maps or anything like that, ask. We will be more than happy to answer and help you out. Uh, again, thanks for watching. I hope you all have a good night or day, wherever it is you are.